For years and years, executives from Big Tobacco perpetrated the myth, with a straight face and often on oath, that smoking wasn't harmful. Well, you're about to see something that'll take your breath away. A current senior employee of British American Tobacco admitting what we've all known for a long time. Smoking kills. No, he doesn't have a gun held to his head, but he does have an agenda. He wants to promote nicotine e-cigarettes, or vaping, as it's also called in Europe and America. And guess what? It is safer than tobacco. But does that mean it's safe? If you smoke cigarettes all your life, then on average half of those cigarette smokers will die prematurely from a variation of diseases, whether that's lung cancer, heart disease, respiratory disease. We've heard this before, but never from a tobacco company man. Lung cancer, heart disease, respiratory disease. Lying used to be their stock in trade. I believe nicotine is not addictive. I believe that nicotine is not addictive. I believe nicotine is not addictive, yes. But millions of people are again putting their faith in big tobacco, who are now pushing smokers to quit and take up e-cigarettes or vaping instead. How do you know that e-cigarettes are a safer option? The evidence to date, the scientific consensus, is that they're around about 95% less harmful than cigarette smoking. E-cigarettes turn nicotine-laced liquid into a vapour. In Britain alone, there are over 2 million users. They call themselves vapours and they are making nicotine cool again. It's the habitual need to inhale and exhale something visible and that feeling of nicotine because the nicotine addiction doesn't end at just that chemical reaction. It is the habit of smoking as well. And I think that's really where vaping has taken off. And I used to smoke roughly 70 a day, which was, you know, quite heavy and it did quite a lot on my lungs and stuff. But 70 a yeah, day? Yeah, it was quite a lot. And how, man, how much do you smoke now? Oh, I don't smoke any cigarettes at all. I just purely vape for about three years now. This is music to the ears of British American Tobacco, keen to crack this new market and along the way rebrand themselves as responsible corporate citizens. All right, so this is our pilot plant. We do a lot of the prototypes for our next generation. Not long here. ago, I would never have been granted an interview, let alone be allowed in. But in this new era, their chief scientist, Dr. David O'Reilly, is now happy to take me on a tour and graphically spell out the dangers of smoking. Yes, yeah, so David, what is the point of having this displayed here like this? Okay, so this wheel represents the harmful or potentially harmful chemicals that is produced when cigarettes are burnt. It's been described to me as the wheel of death. Are you comfortable with that description? Well, I, I wouldn't, you know, I'm a scientist, I wouldn't describe it as the wheel of death, but certainly this is the problem. These chemicals will lead to disease and early death for lifetime cigarette smokers. It's an unusual strategy, warning of the dangers of cigarettes with no intention to stop selling them. I guess the, the message back to someone like yourself from a tobacco company is if you're so concerned about saving lives, stop the supply of cigarettes. I think we have to be pragmatic. Cigarettes exist today. It's the biggest tobacco category on the planet. One of the reasons why I'm proud of working at British American Tobacco is because, yes, we do manage this controversial product, this very risky consumer product, but we do it in a way that is the most responsible way that anyone can manage a product. When it comes to talking about the safety of any nicotine-based products, do you understand a reticence in trusting someone like yourself from the tobacco industry, an industry that stood up and swore that nicotine wasn't addictive? I can't change the past. I wasn't there in the past. I'm not going to account for the past. I am interested now in what the actions that we take today as leaders and what that's going to mean for our consumers in the future. So British American Tobacco has invested a billion dollars into e-cigarette research. Here in their Southampton lab, they collect and compare the vapour from an e-cigarette to the smoke from a tobacco cigarette. These machines mimic lungs. And you can see that the aerosol is being collected and these pistons, when they open, you'll see the vapour. You can see the vapour coming through. Okay, yeah. It's collecting the vapour there. So this is meant to represent how a human uses an right. e-cigarette? But in a controlled way. Yeah, right, yeah. OK. And there's nothing more stark 
than looking at the residue of a cigarette versus an e-cigarette. It's almost black and white. That's all the tar and the uh, products of combustion. Obviously, that would coat the inside of your lungs. When you look at the same collection of vapour from one of our e-cigarettes, you can see the powder's clean. This is why this causes smoking-related diseases and why we believe this will save lives. You understand the irony of this, don't you? That you're a cigarette company. You make tobacco cigarettes. You're pointing out the dangers and showing me the alternative. I think this is entirely consistent with our company strategy of offering consumers choice in the same way that if we were selling a full sugar soda drink, why would we be criticised for selling a diet drink and water and fruit juice? And it's not just big tobacco spruiking e-cigarettes. Britain's oldest and most conservative medical establishment, the Royal College of Physicians, and its members like Dr Nick Hopkinson, also believe they are safer. We're very confident that compared to smoking, the, the harms involved are certainly no more than 5% of, of, of the, the, the risk from, from, from smoking. So for someone who is a smoker, switching across to vaping is a, is a huge improvement in terms of their, their health risk. The irony is stark. The relationship between the medical fraternity and big tobacco has been fraught for a long time. In fact, it was in 1962 that London's Royal College of Physicians released its landmark finding, categorically linking smoking with cancer. And now, 55 years later, in an uneasy alliance, it's recommending smokers use e-cigarettes, a product increasingly being made and marketed by big tobacco but this is the tobacco industry, and they once told us that cigarettes were safe. That's a really important issue. I mean, the tobacco industry has a, um, has a long and very well-documented history of, of lying about the effects of smoking. That's my point. <laughs> but uh, I think in, in, in this instance, um, I think what, what, what they're saying accords with what, this, what the, the science so far shows. OK. Here we go with it. Let's take your blood pressure. Excellent. You and this view is shared by plenty of Australian medicos, like Associate Professor of Public Health, Colin Mendelson. So for those people who go from cigarettes to vaping, are they just swapping one evil for another? Well, they're not, because almost all of the harm from cigarettes is due to smoke. Vaping contains, the aerosol contains nicotine, and trace amounts of chemicals. There are small amounts of chemicals, but we can say for sure it's safer than tobacco, which kills two out of three long-term smokers. Do you expect vaping to kill people? We've had 10 years of vaping so far. There's been no evidence of any serious harm from vaping. The only problem is that using a nicotine e-cigarette in Australia is actually illegal. Annette Huppets is breaking the law. So being an e-cigarette user, using nicotine in your e-cigarette, what does that make you? That well, it makes me a criminal. I'm a criminal for giving up smoking and, and becoming healthier for doing it. It's not going to stop you? No. If I go back to smoking, I'll probably die from a smoking-related illness. So, no, I'm, it's, it's not stopping me. Here in Australia, it's legal to smoke cigarettes, which even big tobacco now says can kill you, but it's illegal to use nicotine e-cigarettes, even though everyone agrees they're much safer. As contradictory as this sounds, the federal government doesn't believe there's enough evidence yet to support the e-cigarette hype. Even if they are 95% less harmful than cigarettes, it's still less harmful. Uh, if I cross the local freeway, it's probably less harmful if I'm hit by a car than hit by a truck, but is either desirable? Do you think e-cigarettes will kill you? We, we don't know. We're one of the more stringent regulators uh, and different countries have taken different approaches to allowing it. Professor John Skerritt of the Therapeutic Goods Administration oversees the committee that just last month knocked back the bid to make nicotine e-cigarettes legal here. 
I think the evidence in the literature shows that uh, they are safer than conventional cigarettes, although I don't think they're without problems. Uh, for example, some of the solvents in them, one of them's antifreeze, which is used and then vaporised and people inhale it. If they are safer than conventional cigarettes, which kill people, we know that, should they not be readily available in this country? Well, the issue is whether they act as a pathway towards uh, increasing smoking. And again, the experts are divided on that. To get around the Australian laws, e-cigarette users personally import nicotine liquid from overseas. They then mix it into one of the hundreds of flavours available and then vape away. Still, while the potential threat of prosecution remains, they all say the law is an ass and should be changed. One of the big concerns for the government is that e-cigarettes is a gateway to traditional cigarettes. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> he shakes I his head I don't see that at all. <laughs> no? Why do you no. laugh? It's like I mean... saying Panadol is a gateway to heroin. So why won't it be supported then by the TGA? What, what's their motivation, do you believe? I think the TGA is very risk averse. I think it's looking at potential risks, which many of which are theoretical, concerns that kids will take them up, that they'll renormalise smoking. The TGA has taken a particular abstinent only view that people have to stop smoking and that's the only choice. What do you think is the cost of taking the abstinence stand? I think it will cost Australians hundreds of thousands of lives. Do you accept lives of smokers will continue to be lost? I, I, I don't know about that because the other risk you would have is if you introduced a product to Australia which uh, actually turned out not to reduce our already low levels of smoking and we've, it's something we're very proud of, the, the 12 or 13 per cent. And unfortunately nicotine and smoking have a history of so-called innovations that were meant to be uh, radical improvements. So asbestos-containing filters, it sounds hard to believe these days. And so that's why both we, but the broader medical authorities within Australia are being cautious, because once this thing's out of the bag, uh, it would be very hard to put back in. Yet slowly but surely, the vapour is spreading down under. It's estimated there are now half a million regular e-cigarette users here and vape bars like Wick and Wire in Melbourne are becoming the 21st century tobacconist. Mango, uh, the other one's raspberry and I think there's a watermelon as well. But... Except the customers have quit cigarettes, but not nicotine. To me, it poses a very low risk compared to the alternative, which is smoking. Are you at all concerned that down the track... Yeah it may well be discovered that these are not as safe as you think they are, as safe as you're being told they are. No. No, I'm not. How can you be so I certain? do believe that it will have some health effect. Breathing in something all day, every day, can't be great for you. But I know how bad smoking is, and I haven't been able to give up smoking any other way. So it's a choice between dying and living is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying.